Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who are your shows best like Sir Spassels, Spassels, Spy Masters, Feast Masters? I'm a useful idiot. And today I want to do uh, what's turned out to be an ongoing series on surveillance and the National Security, Security Agency and, and all that. It's quite the topic these days. And the whole Snowden case, of course, is uh, all the headlines. So all this uh, material about uh, spying and surveillance in the United States is becoming all the more interesting. So I've done a couple of uh, uh, related stories about uh, NSA revelations in the past and whistleblowers in the past. And every time I go back and look at one of these stories now, it, it seems all the more interesting in the context of what's going on right now. So that's why I'm bringing uh, stories that uh, are actually old news. But uh, that is the point in this case, because uh, all this stuff is old news. So let's get to this story. This is from uh, April of 2008. So this is uh, still during the Bush administration. And this was an article that was in the Washington Post that talked about uh, a new uh, whistleblower, uh, Babak Pasdar. And um, he worked for Verizon. And uh, he came out and uh, exposed the uh, spying program. And this was, uh, this had a uh, predecessor in a uh, gentleman named Mark Klein, who was a whistleblower in uh, 2006 uh, over AT&T. He worked for AT&T. So here's two private citizens, both whistleblowers. So let's get to the, the first story. So first of all, Mr. Uh, Babak Pastar came out and said that uh, the FBI, quote, with the click of a mouse can instantly transfer key data along a computer circuit to an FBI technology office in Quantico. And uh, this is what's interesting. This is called the Quantico circuit. Uh, so you can probably look up more information on the Quantico circuit. There's probably a lot of videos around from back in 2008 about the, this very thing. But uh, it turns out it's a massive spying operations uh, on American citizens. Same thing we're hearing about now, five years later. And then, uh, quote, that a new FISA whistleblower has stepped forward, and that's Mr. Babak Pastar, uh, forward with information about a major wireless provider granting the state unrestricted access to all of their customers' voice communications and electronic data via a so-called, quote, Quantico circuit, unquote. So it turns out that... Uh, the FBI has created a network of links and electronic hubs for collection purposes called fusion centers among the nation's largest telecom carriers and internet providers. And uh, there's 40 different FBI offices. They're all, all routed back to Quantico. So, and uh, let me caveat the fact is I'm talking about the FBI, but as we now know, all of these uh, uh, agencies like the FBI, the CIA, and uh, NSA and DHS all have their own surveillance programs and then they all share their information and their material. So um, so when I'm talking about the FBI, of course this uh, has all the relevance to NSA as well. So anyway, then uh, this same time, in two, around 2006, um, AT&T whistleblower Mark Klein came out and said the NSA had been given access by AT&T management to install splitters to route everything back to the NSA. So essentially another type of Quantico circuit that the NSA was using at AT&T, and then we have the FBI using splitters and accessing material and sending it back to Quantico. So uh, everybody's using the same techniques, uh, just different agencies. And uh, the uh, documents reveal, and this to me is one of the most uh, revealing things here, and that is, in short, an exact copy of all internet traffic that flowed through critical AT&T and Verizon cables. And that includes emails, documents, pictures, web browsing, voice over internet phone conversations, everything was being diverted to equipment inside the secret room. In addition, technological equipment used in the project, sophisticated search components capable of sifting through huge amounts of digital data, including text, voice, and images, in real time according to pre-programmed criteria. This is a very, very important point because, once again, um, this shows that um, they're all lying. 
Obama is lying, all the Europeans are lying, the NSA is lying, everyone is lying. It spells it out right there that everything is available in real time. They are reading the, com the contents. So despite all their um, denials, it says right here, because of this earlier exposure, emails, documents, pictures, web browsing, voice over internet, phone conversations, everything was being diverted. That sounds like content to me. And um, and then the fact that uh, Obama and the rest of them are saying, oh, they're just collecting metadata. And uh, they don't really uh, have the ability to sift through it. And once again, here we go. Another confirmation that, yes, that technology exists. Sophisticated search component capable of sifting through huge amounts of digital data, including text, voice, and images in real time. Um, so the technology is there. They're all using it. They're all lying. And, um, and if that's not enough, of course, it, it turns out that uh, um, we go through the same dog and pony show every time, too. There was a half-hearted protest from Congress only to have the surveillance budgets increased. So that's what we're going to see now, too. Should there probably won't be any hearings because they don't want to talk about NSA. But, uh, you know, we're getting these half-hearted protests from Congress only to have the surveillance budgets increased. And, in fact, in 2008, when this story happened, it was exactly when the Bush administration was working to give uh, all the telecommunications company, communications companies retroactive immunity for being sued for spying. And, uh, and that was because there were already lawsuits against AT&T and, um, and to uh, really drive home that we're just having more deja vu and all this uh, jibber jabber about hearings and, and, and all the feigned outrage here we go again this is what a congressman had to say back in 2008 when you put Mr. Postar's information together with that of AT&T whistleblower Mark Klein there's troubling evidence of telecom misconduct in massive domestic for surveillance of ordinary Americans. Congress needs to have hearings and get some answers about whether telecommunications companies are helping the government to illegally spy on millions of us, unquote. So here we go, the same smoke up your ass, the same bullshit, the same political posturing, and it doesn't even matter whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, um, because it's going to be the same. And um, so there we have it. Um, there they were five years ago talking about how we need to get to the bottom of this millions of Americans being spied on. And here we go through it again because everybody forgot about that one and they know it. And it's a sad commentary that uh, they can count on knowing that most people forgot what happened two weeks ago, two years ago, two administrations ago. And um, and uh, and also when, you, when we talk about Verizon and AT&T, just like when we talk about FBI and CIA, all the intelligence industries share this information. And likewise, AT&T, AT and of course, is connected to many other providers: Sprint, Quest, Global Crossing, Cable and Wireless, Verizon. So they're getting all that information, and um, once again, pointing to more lies from the Europeans and from the Obama administration. And um, the uh, article also mentions that the Department of Homeland Security gets authorization to use spy satellites domestically. So there's a whole other topic. Um, using uh, uh, commercial and uh, government satellites to uh, also spy on people. So we'll more information on that later. But uh, it's interesting how this uh, Verizon system works, uh, tapping right into the line. They use high-speed DS3 digital line to allow the FBI, CIA, and NSA unfettered access to the carrier's wireless network, including billing records and other customer data. Um, Verizon, of course, denies it, but it's, it's fully documented. So they just use a splitter and then just gather the information in real time, including all its contents. And uh, in media, we're stonewalling this uh, story back in 2008 to a certain degree. And uh, even now, they're uh, stonewalling it to an extent, all, uh, all on board with uh, capturing Snowden, trying to focus on Snowden and less on the NSA scandal. And um, May, uh, electronic communications between major telecom firms and FBI personnel scattered across the country provide the Bureau with real-time access to who is speaking to who, time and duration of each call, blah, blah, blah. That's their corporate line. But once again, here we go, the Quantico circuit and um, the AT&T secret rooms, 
They have content being read in real time. They have the software to sift through huge amounts of digital data. And so, once again, this, these old stories become relevant. And it's also relevant because why the big deal about Edward Snowden? Here we have confirmation of everything, just about everything we're learning now has already been confirmed over and over again. And you can go back five years and three years and seven years and 10 years and 15 years ago and 20 years ago. And all this stuff has come out. So why the big deal? And, mo and, and even more relevant to that point is the fact that Babak Pastar was not uh, hunted down, was not persecuted, was not prosecuted. And uh, uh, ni neither was uh, Mark Klein. Mark Klein actually uh, retired very casually in 2004 and uh, leads a quiet life. So, uh, of course, he spent 30 years in the NSA. So another one like uh, William Binney, who uh, is very credible and had quite a quite a uh, bit of experience. So uh, there you have it. Uh, another blast from the past, this time 2008. And uh, uh, old questions about the uh, surveillance program bring up new questions about uh, what we're seeing now. Uh, once again, pointing to perhaps a different agenda than uh, what the public is being uh, fed at this point. I'm useful idiot. Don't you be one too. And remember, if I agreed with you, then we'd both be wrong.